For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. These words, my dear faithful, are recited at Vespers, the evening prayer of the church, each day. They are taken from the great canticle of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Magnificat, and they demonstrate to us why it is so very fitting that we should have an entire month, a month that we begin today, dedicated to the Most Holy Rosary, that greatest of devotions in honor of the Most Holy Mother of God. This past week at Matins, the first of the hours of the Divine Office, the Church read the accounts of the two valiant women of the Old Testament, Judith and Esther, who were raised up by God to deliver the chosen people from the threat of utter destruction. These heroic daughters of Israel are a prefiguration of the great benefit that comes to the chosen people of God in the New Testament through the Blessed Virgin Mary. As St. Bernard, the great doctor of the church, declares, all God's graces flow through Mary. The Holy Rosary is a gift to the human race directly from Our Lady herself, much in the same way that the Our Father is a gift given to us by our blessed Lord himself. Just as the pious recitation of the Lord's Prayer is the greatest of prayers which we might offer to God, so too is the Holy Rosary the greatest of prayers with which we might honor our Lord's Holy Mother. Opponents of the Rosary, as many Protestants are, might claim that praying the Rosary gives too much attention to Our Lady since the rosary is, after all, the most common prayer that Catholics say. But this is not true. Do we not begin the rosary with the Apostles' Creed, the prayer which attests all of the chief truths of the Catholic faith, which we believe and which we must live up to and even be willing to die for? Do we not begin each mystery with the Our Father, and declare in the course of each Hail Mary, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Does it not honor God that we should honor for his sake the mother whom he holds most dear? We do show a particular honor to the Blessed Virgin Mary by reciting the rosary, but this is most fitting for of all of God's creatures, she is the most pleasing to him, and she holds the highest place in heaven after God himself. And this we show in the course of the rosary by placing the Hail Mary directly after the Lord's Prayer. We address our Heavenly Mother in the rosary using the inspired words of sacred scripture itself. First, the salutation spoken by the Archangel Gabriel when he announced to her that she was to be the mother of God. To this we add the words of St. Elizabeth when she greeted the mother of her Redeemer at the visitation. We acknowledge against all those who blaspheme against our Heavenly Mother that she is indeed the mother of God, for her divine Son is true God, and also that she is holy, as some enemies of the truth deny. We ask that she pray for us, and we humbly express that we are sinners. Pray for us sinners. Oh, if only we would stop and think on these words 
and realize their true meaning, we would speedily rise to great humility. We indeed are sinners, but she is holy. Holy Mary, pray for us sinners. We beg our Heavenly Mother to pray for us now and at the hour of our death in order that we should obtain her pardon and also her assistance. Sin is indeed an offense principally against God. But to the degree that one loves God and draws closer to him, to that same degree, one will despise and detest sin. Thus it is that Mary, the purest of God's creatures, is deeply grieved at the callous offending of her divine son. Picture her sorrow, for example, at the foot of the cross. It is our own sins which have caused our dear mother to suffer so. And thus we ought to beg also her pardon after that of her divine son. The rosary was given to St. Dominic by Our Lady to use as a weapon against the enemies of our salvation. It is for this reason that religious wear the rosary hanging from their belt where a knight would hang his sword. Like a sword is, the rosary is both a weapon for offense, to attack, but also to defend. Originally, Our Lady gave to St. Dominic the rosary as a weapon to use to conquer the evil heresy of the Albigenses, which was taking over Europe at that time. There were many preachers who tried to lead people back to the truth but they all seemed to fail until St. Dominic, armed with the rosary, protected by the assistance of Our Lady, went out and fought against these heretics. Most people nowadays have never even heard of this heresy, and that is because of the efficacy of the Holy Rosary in overcoming the enemies of our salvation. The rosary is also a weapon to defend, to defend Christendom, even against physical attacks. There is the famous example of St. Pius V, who commanded the faithful to recite the Holy Rosary as the forces of Christendom were preparing to do battle against the Mohammedans. And this led to the famous Battle of Lepanto, where the very small Christian fleet overcame the much larger Mohammedan Turkish fleet, ultimately due to the power of the rosary. Particularly in our own day as well, when the attacks of the enemy are so numerous, we ought to avail ourselves of this great weapon of the holy rosary to vanquish the heresies of Vatican II, just as the rosary vanquish the Albigenses of old, and also to defend us against the onslaughts of modern paganism which are all around us. We are meant to pray the rosary, however, with a pure heart, or at the very least, a penitent heart. As declared by the angel Gabriel, our Lady is full of grace. It is for this reason that her prayer is, as, is of such great efficacy with God. To the point even, we might say, that God cannot refuse her anything, as we see at the marriage feast of Cana. If we desire our own prayers to be heard, we also must be pure of heart. That is, we must love what God loves and we must hate what God hates. It sometimes happens that those living a wicked life might try to pray, 
but then they give up almost immediately, thinking that they are not being aided. And this is most foolish, for it is only through prayer, barring a miracle, that the poor sinner shall obtain the grace to remove the obstacle which prevents his prayer from being heard, this obstacle being his own sins. If our heart is not yet perfectly pure, free from sin, we must at least pray with a penitent heart, lamenting our sins, detesting them in all of their wickedness, resolving to abandon them forever and to take whatever the necessary means might be to grow in virtue and amend our lives. We must pray the rosary, we might say, particularly if we should be a sinner. The Curie of Ars, famous pastor of souls, insists that it is impossible for someone who devoutly prays the rosary every day to remain in mortal sin. You will, he says, either give up the one or the other. Pray the rosary as a great defense and a weapon against mortal sin. We are meant to pray the rosary with devotion. For the rosary is not just random words that we say, but an expression of love to our Heavenly Mother. We are meant, as it were, to mean what we say. You could never sufficiently express your affection and love for those dearest to you. You never tire of saying how much they mean to you how much you appreciate their presence and assistance. We ought to approach those prayers which seem to repeat themselves in the same way. We are telling our Heavenly Mother over and over again how much we love her. We might also say we are making reparation one little bit at a time for all of the many countless blasphemies uttered against her by the pagan modern world. The most important part of the rosary is to meditate on the mysteries. And this is something that many people find difficult to do, but with practice, it can be done, and it must be done. We ought to think of what the mystery presents to us, to consider it, to act, ask how we might adore God based upon this mystery. What lesson do we learn? How can we imitate the holiness of Our Lady? Or how can we imitate the submission of our blessed Lord in obedience and humility to Our Lady and St. Joseph or to the will of his Heavenly Father in the agony of the garden? We must express our sorrow for sin that we are not as humble as is Our Lady, that we are not as diligent in performing God's will as is Our Lord. We must ask for the grace to imitate these mysteries. <clears throat> and we must thank God for those few occasions where we have corresponded to the graces he has given us and used the lessons we have learned. Finally, we must pray the rosary with confidence. Confidence that our Blessed Mother can assist us to obtain what we desire. Confidence also that she desires to assist us, that she wishes to help us. Prayer without confidence will seldom be heard. And so we must strive to approach our Blessed Mother with confidence. We begin today the month of the Holy Rosary, the month of October. Let us resolve that we shall say, at least during this month, the Holy Rosary each and every day. 
Let us say it as a family, all together, showing the unity of the home in the desire to serve God and to do what is pleasing to him. We might gain many indulgences. Let us offer them in reparation for our own sins or for the relief of the holy souls in purgatory. If we pray the rosary every day, piously and devoutly, we can be sure that we will overcome or avoid entirely mortal sin. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.